Hi everyone, um, this is a short video to show you how you can use eBird photographs to um, start looking into some identification problems or maybe just learn about geographic variation. So here's what you do, and it's, it's pretty easy. You go to um, Explore, and in Explore, you will search photos and sounds down here. If it comes up so you search photos and sounds and I'm gonna pick a little um, species issue let's say I want to figure out the difference between eastern and western red fox sparrows okay the northern population of fox sparrows the red fox sparrow and we're gonna look at the eastern Iliaca subspecies and the western Zaboria subspecies and just try to get a sense for whether they're different or not and um, It's a really good good tool to try to use eBird to do this. So let's see enter species name here. We start with spot fox sparrow and We will go to red Assuming they're properly identified if you find something that isn't properly identified you can um, tag that but uh, well, we have a bunch of red fox sparrows here. Here's a real classic eastern type. This is, I can look down here, it's uh, Maryland. Real classic eastern fox sparrow, lots of reddish all over it, you know, on the face and gray eyebrow, lots of uh, rust r on the crown as well. A uh, little slight wing bars. So all looking good there. So now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to location. Now we're gonna pick um, Alaska, because Alaska is where Zaboria should be. There shouldn't be Iliaka, the eastern ones, over in Alaska. So Alaska, now we're getting that set of fox sparrow photographs. Now we're going to get down to a smaller set that's just from Alaska. And here we find that um, we have an entirely different set of birds that look like fox sparrows, red fox sparrows, but, you know, a little darker, perhaps grayer crowns. In fact, that's one of the um, descriptions of Zaboria from the West being more gray crowned and um, slightly duller, not as rusty. So, so far so good. You, you start learning the differences between the Eastern and Westerns by um, isolating photographs from the Western part of their range. You can do this with a lot of different subspecies and what have you. And you can also um, use the date. So June, July, we're going to restrict it to the breeding season and uh, set that date, date range. Then we have an even res more restricted set of, of birds and vocalizations. We don't want to look at vocalizations. We go well to the left over here and just click on the photos. And then we have breeding red fox sparrows from Alaska for you to study. You could do the same thing, you know, and isolate the red fox sparrows from, you know, in Eastern Canada, Ontario, for this time of, you know, this, this um, the breeding season, what have you. And you can use these as a um, curated set of photographs where, where you can study geographic variation, identification, or what have you. What I mean by curated is that somebody has identified these. Hopefully they've gone through a certain amount of, um, 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 filtering so misidentifications when they exist are eventually weeded out and um, corrected. We also have date, we have location, we have species. So in fact this is sort of like a museum collection of curated specimens but they're photographs and in that way you can use them like curated museum specimens to understand um, geographic variation, identification problems, and so forth. So as long as you know how to filter, you can get a lot of information out of the eBird photographs and also, if you want, vocalizations or video, what have you. You can choose all that and uh, know that there's also other filters you can, you can use to um, get that set of photographs into a smaller set. So there you go. Hopefully you can fiddle around with that, start looking at peregrine falcons, red-tailed hawks, orange crown warblers, 
and various uh, species that have broad geographic distribution, have different populations, go state by state, and, and start studying how they vary. It's actually pretty interesting. You learn a lot if you're interested in that kind of stuff as a birder. Okay, thanks. This has been Alvaro from Alvaro's Adventures. And um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you.